Ladies and gentlemen, uh, bonjour dickheads. Salut les Français, cet épisode va majoritairement être en anglais ce soir. Uh, donc les sous-titres vont être disponibles uh, normalement à la fin de la semaine. Revenez sur uh, YouTube pour voir les sous-titres English speakers. This is mainly going to be in English today. Uh, so let's have some fucking fun. Welcome uh, to another episode of Paul Taylor's Happy Hour Live. Happy hour? I'm not fucking happy. I'm angry. I'm always fucking angry. Oh, and we are live, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. We're live on uh, YouTube. I think that we probably are live on Facebook as well. Uh, let me just double check that we're the live on the Facebook. We are live on Facebook and Twitch. Oh, Twitch. Little old Twitch. Maybe we're live on Twitch as well. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are. We are live on all three platforms. Welcome uh, to another show. Ladies and gentlemen, I can see you on fucking YouTube. Uh, El Medi on YouTube says, I'm happy. On Twitch, Fabrice Maha Fa Fa Fabricio Mahari says, hello. Uh, and on Facebook, Julie Mamot Kulen says, je viens de vous voir dans Aline. Well, thanks very much. I did my first film in France, but that is not the case. We're not talking about that tonight. Unless you decide to. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to bring on my guest for this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the wonderful Mr. Nathaniel Drew! All right! That was fucking loud. Oh, there he is. Um, actually, can I... Yeah, you can. Do I need coasters. Yeah, we should have got. Co I didn't realize you hadn't finished your beer. Oops. Already. Um, I'm, I'm well, I need to get myself a beer then. In that case, let me take over while you get yourself a beer. I'll take. I. Uh, I got this. All right. So, um, the people uh, who have watched this show before, this is officially. You're the person who's been on here the most amount of times. I thought Jay had that title. No, because. I mean, he, I think he's been in the studio on a live right. uh, the most amount of times, but yeah. a lot of his lives were the second part, which wow. nobody knows about. You're the person that next to your name has a 3.0. Oh, wow. Just like my GPA. That's a joke. What is G? I don't, it doesn't, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> I uh, could explain that. I guess you get, yeah, not the same system. I, name, I, I will get a beer. Uh, on my own while you have your beer here. Uh, and uh, while I get a beer, for the people that might not know who you are, because, you know, yes. there's new people that watch us all the time, uh, yes. just uh, present yourself. Introduce yourself. Who are you? What you do? Blah, blah, blah. On it. Yes, sir. Uh, let's check back in uh, whenever you're... Okay, yeah. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Nathaniel. Uh, I go by Nathan. Um, in my personal life. I don't know why I just mentioned that. Usually people know me as Nathaniel. Uh, I am a content creator on YouTube, among other things, working on a book, what YouTuber isn't, right? You're um, working on a book. Yes, so that's on the way. And I'm a general uh, enthusiast of life. And I want the energy to be high this evening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's already high. Let's have a good time. Uh, let's have a good time. Cheers, by the way. Yes. Sante. Cheers, and cheers to all of you if you're drinking uh, anything, whether it's alcohol or not. Alcohol or non-alcoholic, we're fine with that. By the way, Nate, uh, what drink are you drinking? What beer is that? So this is the Paul Taylor's Hoppy Hour. Let's get that. What? I've got to close my face. I've got to close my face. There we go. Yes, perfect. It is a beer, ladies and gentlemen, that I have made um, with the help of Une Petite Mousse and uh, Brasserie Viva. Uh, you can buy this beer, if you so wish, at paultaylorcomedy.com slash beer. Just saying. I'm drinking Desperados because um, my best mates bought me. See the thing that's just behind you over here? Look at, my f look, at, look at the screen. See this thing here, this black thing here? Yeah. It's, a, it's like an actual beer pump. Wow, okay. So anyway, uh, hi. Hello, yes. everyone. This is great, by the way. I'll, I'll uh, give my uh, endorsement. Oh, you, you, you enjoyed it? Yeah, I'm That's actually good. liking it a lot. Ah, yeah. Good. I, I enjoy it a lot. I just thought it would be easier to do the 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 pump beer. The pump beer? Jesus Christ. Um, uh, right. Uh, so. So uh, hello, everybody. The point in these lives, ladies and gentlemen, is that you ask us questions. You decide what happens during this live. 
Um, so, uh, I, I mean, we, we already, you know, we already caught up a little bit before the live. A little bit, but it's actually funny. There's a whole bunch of, every time we get onto a juicy topic, it's like, uh, save it for the live. Hey, look, here's a good question. Ryan Hunter says, yes theory, Nathaniel Drew and Paul Taylor. No, Nathaniel <laughs> and Paul Taylor. We just talked about yes theory. Oh, that can absolutely 20 minutes happen. ago. I don't know who they are. Like, I've never met them. You have, uh, but I enjoy what I they do. I can change that. We can, we can change that. We can make it happen. Um... Uh, so let us know where, what do we do for this live? Ladies and gentlemen, Alexandra off of YouTube, off of Facebook says, cheers guys, Alexandra Diaz Fernandez, uh, salud or Saudi. I'm just going racist by the last name. I reckon it's, <laughs> I reckon it's Portuguese. I reckon Alexandra, you're, you're, you're Portuguese or Brazilian or from a Portuguese speaking country, Saudi, because okay. there you go. That's just my guess. Why, why is somebody going uh, Theo? Well, what, what's Theo saying? There you go. Merci d'avoir bougé le sofa. Merci d'avoir bougé le sofa. Alors, so there was, was a bit off. So there was controversy last week, Nate. Oh. Um, so uh, you you met the girls downstairs. Yeah. Uh, who are all very single and uh, well up for it if you're if you are. Um, but uh, basically, I sp I told the crew last week that uh, because uh, Fanny, my producer, has employed like two new people. Mm -hmm. This is now their break room this is where they have lunch now oh, uh, the team from down the stairs wow. and they had rearranged it so that the sofa was against this wall and the two chairs mm. that this chair over here and the chair that's behind you were, were and it would just it looked weird on the image and everyone was like the fucking sofa paul what happened to the sofa so i've moved ah. it back okay uh tio chino thanks very much and most of you who are watching don't care about the sofa but that's okay um, Hello to all of you. Wow, there's a lot of comments. I love it. Let's. I, I, I'm happy to do. I don't know how you usually do this, but I'm happy to do. Have you ever done like a speed round, like speed answering like questions? Speed, I I do this almost every live. Every live. Okay. But what happens is the speed questions Not end special. up being long questions. But let's do a speed round of questions. Fabrice m m m says, "What sofa, Nate? Push that way. This sofa. That sofa there. This one here. There you go. That one right there. Fucking that one right there, mate. Uh, let's go." Questions. Um, what's up? Hold on, I saw. What's up, Nathaniel? How did you feel when you saw Amar with? <laughs> hold on. When you okay. saw Amar with the new passport, hold on. Was hold, your first Amar speech? Ho hold on, Ellie Mouterde. What's up? How did you feel when you saw Amar with a new passport? Ha okay, so I I don't I don't know what the context <laughs> okay, of this is. Can I explain is. this? Okay, so basically, <laughs> this is a really hilarious comment to me. Uh, yes, theory have a, another channel called Seek Discomfort. Mm -hmm. That's their merch brand too. I okay. guess I'm sort of plugging it right now, honestly. And they posted a video. Uh, they post lots of great videos on there, where um, you know recently Amar, one of the founders of Yes Theory, got a passport. Okay, he had to go through this whole complicated process because he's Egyptian, and that doesn't give you access to many countries in the world. I see. So we had this really fun day in Paris. Oh, is this the video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There okay, you go. let me just share the screen with that's, the people. That's the yes, sir, video. S hold on, move, move, move slightly to the outside so that you can keep talking. Okay, there's a, there, oh, but the, on their other channel, Seek Discomfort, they posted a, just a little video uh, where they were surprising him, and I was in the video just hanging out, okay? Okay, so and Seek Discomfort, this video here. Here's the hilarious thing about this, okay? <clears throat> surprising Amar to celebrate his new passport. Okay, so you're <laughs> in that first video. So I'm in that video. And like, I, I, it feels like 50% of all the comments are exactly what Ellie's asking me about right now, which was, <laughs> I freaked out when, uh, so Amar is famous for doing speeches, okay? And he, 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 he like people really kind of, <laughs> yes, there he's on. Okay, so there. Oh, there's yes, famous. there he's on. Yes, there. <laughs> so guys, so, so, <laughs> fucking hell. Sorry, I'm 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 fanboying right now that these really? guys are on. Fuck, of course I am. I was just hanging out with Thomas. He's probably watching because I told you. Him told me he over. just moved to Paris, mate. Yeah. We need to hook up. Oh, fucking hell. God. I like I've been following. Jesus Christ. Okay. All right. So, so anyway, let sorry. Me finish I my story. So Amar is really eloquent with his speeches and. Right before he starts his speech, I, I get really excited. I'm just like, oh, this is my first Amar speech. Hit hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry. Don't, I just had a COVID. Oh my I, God. <laughs> I, I had to get a COVID injection today because I'm going to England tomorrow. Oh, uh, man. And, uh, my apologies. And uh, it fucking hurts. Sorry about that, bro. I, I'm fully vaccinated, <laughs> but I needed an extra one. So... Maybe we should have swapped seats. Hit me in the in the stump. Hit me, yeah, hit me in go. the face. I draw the. So, so, <laughs> yeah, so eh. So I was Carry like, on. Sorry, I interrupted you again. So I was just like, okay, you're gonna freak out when you see this. Yes, let's hang, Thomas. So he's he's down. 
we'll hang. <laughs> Thomas is your is your name now. So anyway, long story short, everybody was commenting about my enthusiasm in that the video. Passport. Yeah, and it's cut. It's arrived in all the way into this live stream. I love that. That's crazy. That's uh, <laughs> Carlos Camejo says he's American. He's very touchy feely. I know, but I I didn't I didn't prepare the old. Um, that's funny. I that's not my stereotype of americans like latin people are more touchy touchy feely in my yeah opinion. but i mean you're i mean yeah you're american with latin roots right no no right right <laughs> but when i think of americans i don't know i, I yeah, big it's generalization the, you know H- hundreds of millions of people so it's the hug that's why because french people the hugging right the french people think the hug is more <laughs> intimate and more touchy feely than la bise yeah i was just making sure the sound because this yeah. cable is weird sorry anyway so uh americans are very huggy when they say hello yeah so, as are English people and French people find that more intimate than uh, than la bise. Would you not agree, French people? Yeah. Um, I don't agree, but that's why Americans yeah. have this idea. And to be fair, like the Americans that I've met in my life that I'm good friends with, they're all a lot more touchy feely than English people. Um, Misha Luna says, I, I feel very ignorant because I have no idea who Yes Theory is. Check out their YouTube channel, subscribe to them immediately, uh, and watch all of their videos. Uh, so super cool. I, I'm curious, have you... You touched my I shoulder almost, again. Almost. You can, touch, you, can t- you can touch the top. This, the, it's the side that hurts right I, now. I have an interesting question, and, and this could be a, a topic of conversation that we could explore here, but uh, <laughs> um, I've been happy to start to see La Bise kind of make a little bit of a comeback. I'm seeing some people do it. You're happy to see it, are you? Okay, so I, I would like to talk about that because, like, and feel free to cancel me for this one, okay? Because I get that that's not social distancing necessarily, but, <clears throat> or at all, honestly. No. But it's, it, for me, it was such a cornerstone of French culture. I really, it just, it's very, it's, I love it. I, I love La Bise. And I, I, I think it's better than hugging, honestly. I mean, hugging's nice, oh, too. I'm not, I'm hugging's not, not bad. I'm not for hugging, either. But hugging when you're meeting somebody you've never met before I, is weird. I'm against any form of physical contact when you meet them for the first time, apart from a handshake. Well, la bise is, is no, nice, though. It's, no. You know? No. Two okay. reasons. One, let's say I am i don't know you, and you don't know me, and we... I mean, we're both men, so it's a little bit different, because men that don't know each other don't do la bise. Right. But... Let's say I am a woman, I'm, I don't have any beard hair, and I feel bad for women who have to do la bise with me when they haven't met me because I've got like this weird beard, like pokey hair shit that just feels uncomfortable for a, for a non-shaven face. Or maybe a little bit of, you know, a little bit of that, that stubble is kind of, uh, it could be attractive. Well, yeah, but not when, you, the, the idea of saying hello to somebody professionally or whatever or in anything is not to be attractive initially maybe further down the line i agree okay I, i'm not suggesting you need to seduce somebody with your bees you know but it also it you know it's just a quick moment it's like yeah you know? or you can just imagine you walk and then it, done boom move on you, you onto the conversation or whatever right yeah but the the done on in france takes a lot longer than in the uk <laughs> where if there's five people you walk into a room right. you go hi everyone let's get the beers yeah this <laughs> is I did a whole fucking sketch about it. I'm not going to do the I know, sketch I know, again. I know, I know. And it anyway, is excellent. Uh, Lucas VZ says, I'm, as a French, I'm pretty happy that La Bise stopped for a while. Um, Misha says, I love how uh, French La Bise is, but also hate La Bise with a passion. Um, uh, La Bise with mask is La Mise. That's very funny, Cédric. I like it. Um, uh, I actually ended up doing La Bise to somebody today with a mask on. I thought, why are we doing this? This is horrific. Um, anyway... Um, La Bise has never been my cup of tea. Marion, thank you. Uh, <laughs> oh, Nathan, would you change your opinion about your video? I will never go back to the US. Have you seen that? Uh, I think I did see it. It was a few months ago. Yeah. And you made a video like, I'm never going back to the US. Yeah. What? Yeah. And I can't remember why. Because I'm already drunk. Basically. Because <laughs> I, really? I, mate, I, I, downstairs. <laughs> The, the, the production team were working late tonight again as they often are in recent times because the shows are back up and running and we had maybe three Thank beers tickets. we had three beers before Nate showed up oh uh, I was not privy to that information yeah I'm, I'm like sober right you're now. sober as fuck so y- you need to number one <laughs> you need to get on it anyway no you don't need to I'm not forcing you to drink alcohol I don't want to force anyone to have anyway what is this behaviour Oh, Jesus. So your video, I can't remember why so, you said you would never I go mean, back to the US. You know, it's a little bit of a strong title, but I, I do really stand by the sentiment, which Clickbait. is... Clickbait. Which is that um, ultimately, 
I mean, at this stage, I don't see a future for myself living in the United States. Mm -hmm. I have no desire to move back and live there. Obviously, I can't predict where I'll be 10 years, 20 years, 50 years from now, right? But I'm so much more, like, uh, comfortable and connected to um, this country and this continent in general. I have such a greater network of friends. And I just, I don't know, I can't really quantify it exactly. Mm -hmm. It's just I, I like being here. Where are you from in the U.S. again? On top of it, one of the big... Uh, so I was born in L.A. and I grew up in Portland. Okay, so not small cities either. On top of it, my... Yeah, no. On top of it, my family is leaving the United States. And that's the one big remaining anchor there for me. Right. And when they leave, you know, unless there's some sort of project or something that, uh, you know, might necessitate a trip there, I don't know why I would go over there, you know? Like, I... I, I but all of that being said, for context here, um, oh, mic back? Sound is back. Oh, mic. Okay. Stop, don't touch the mic. Oops. I need to replace this cable. I, I'm sorry, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, uh, what you can touch is this. Do not touch the cable okay. underneath. Gotcha. Can they hear me, though? Yeah, I can see it on there. They can hear you now. So I want to give some context, though. I do recognize that I'm super fortunate and privileged to come from the United States and to have this option. Um, and I'm, and I'm totally cognizant of all the opportunities that came with that, uh, as, as a white American. I mean, I should, pre I should, I should specify, um, there've been, I've gotten all these advantages that have allowed for, you know, for, for me to make these decisions, but, you know, given the choice, I, I'm choosing to be here, you know, mm -hmm. and well, and that like, hasn't like changed. everyone, who, like same with me. Like I get the question all the time. Are you going to go back to the UK at some point? Like I, I like the only thing that would bring me back to the UK, uh, on a permanent basis is like a work opportunity. I, even on a permanent basis, like I, my mum lives over there, but she prefers to come to Paris because really? it's like, well, yeah, because also now that we have a baby, yeah. like where she lives, we we can't go and stay at her house. It's not like she has my childhood house right. where there's 20 bedrooms right. and like we can go there with our baby. Like she totally. lives in a one bedroom flat. So if me, my wife and the baby go there, we would have to stay in a hotel. So hold on, hold on. Are there moments that you feel like, ah! you know, there's something about French culture, the way of life or the city, you know, Paris or whatever, where you're like, I think I want to leave. You know, All this, the time, every day. What are the, I mean, obviously you did an entire series. I did, this, I did 34 but episodes. But if you had to, <laughs> so if you had to name like a top, like maybe two or three things that are just like, if these things, like I'll give you an example. Okay, today, <sighs> this is a long story and I'll go into the details in the, in the live stream afterwards. Okay, but I don't have a home base right now. There's a solution coming. Okay. And things are in the works, but right now, like I don't have like a, an apartment. So I'm like kind of using temporary solutions. Airbnb is like super expensive in Paris. There is a sofa here in case you ever need it. There is no bathroom to wash, <laughs> but there is a sofa. <laughs> so every few days or few weeks, I'm moving around to someplace new. And I, I realized for the first time today that, uh, the metro system in Paris, it is is not very well adapted whatsoever for anybody with like physical disabilities or prams with children. With I'm prams. carrying this gigantic luggage and I'm like, Oh my God, if I like, you know, if, if I hurt myself in some way, this would literally be impossible right mm -hmm. now. So that's a, a little example. It's not like a reason to leave Paris, but like just, you no, know, a but yeah, right like there. every day there's like a, di a different reason to leave <laughs> Paris. And, but like, you know, it's not that I'm stuck here because I still enjoy my life here, but um, that, like, if I wasn't so tied to this city, I might question it a bit more, you know? <clears throat> yeah. Like, my, my work as a stand-up comedian, I can only live in Paris and France. I can't live anywhere else. It, I can't get any money or do any gigs. I can be on tour, and I can live somewhere else and then just come to Paris two nights a week. But the but problem is... Is it, a, is it a choice that you're, you're making it sound like you're you're constrained to living here i'm not constrained but it is a choice in the sense that like what do i choose i choose to be around friends so all my friends that i know in in, in paris whether they're english speakers or french speakers they all live in paris what i meant by paris was france all my friend everyone that i know in france lives in paris everyone okay and so if i were to live in like a smaller city an hour away. Right. It would just always be coming back. Well, then here. it's just like we choose to live a different life. We choose to live a, a life of a family where we have our garden with the house yeah. and the, 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 the child is in school and we're friends with the 
the parents of the other children right. and that becomes our life and then we never see anyone that we actually because my wife grew up in the suburbs of Paris her whole life right. so all her friends are based in Paris yeah. or in the outskirts <clears throat> It, it would make more monetarily sense yeah, to yeah. go like, hey, why don't we, the TGV to Rennes is an hour. Yeah. Why don't we buy a place out there? Right. We don't know anyone. We don't know, we know zero people okay, so, in any other city. In, so in one big reason is you don't know anybody el uh, elsewhere. But if there was one big reason that pushed you out, like that's one reason that's keeping you in, I guess. What's one, what's like one of the biggest reasons that would push you out? Just how busy and mental and f like yeah. how f infuriating the city is. Like just yeah. on a day to day basis, like they're changing all the streets, they're changing all the public transport. They're cha or like it's just. Have it's you seen that though? I think they're trying to make the city a lot greener and like. I'm a hundred percent with that. Do you believe that's going to happen? Yeah, it's the problem is the in between. The problem with Paris is we're in this in between thing where. Hold on a second, isn't that life? Aren't we always in the in between? Do we ever get there? <laughs> That's just, uh, I'm sorry. It just you just it just rolled into my lap right there. Uh, let's uh, let's see what what the people are saying. Uh, I li I live in Lyon and you can be my friend. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mika M Mills. I can be your friend. Um, uh, 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 Fabrice, you knew people before coming to Paris for the first time. No, I didn't. Which is a great. Me point. neither. Me neither. Which is a great point. Um, however, it's possible. I'm now not twenty two years old anymore yeah um, okay so hold on hold on that's another really interesting topic if we can dive into that for a second yeah i was talking with some people and it's like you reach a certain point it feels like for a lot of people where you have to make a very conscious decision either you're gonna make the huge effort to start over somewhere new and it's an adventure and you can meet new people or you're like that is too much energy mm -hmm. that's that that or in years of not feeling like you belong yeah until you finally have a network yeah, yeah. and a community and whatnot yeah. so it I think when you're, like, for, uh, I don't know, it probably depends because, you know, my parents are leaving the United States, so it is possible, right? But <clears throat> I feel like as but you why go on in so life, Why are they leaving the U.S.? Well, it became more easier because no more kids in the house, you know, and they also do a lot of work online, so it's... They, it's well, and also they're c moving closer to you. They're moving closer to me, but it's also... Because they know that you love Europe, and they're like, well, we love yeah, him, and yeah. he loves Europe, so that means But they also love Europe. love Europe, and I think they're also kind of done with the lifestyle and the, you know, the way things are, are over there. Sense. You know, but they they weren't able to do that during the entire, you know... 20 year stretch where they were raising children. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So, well, the age thing is a massive thing. Like, <clears throat> mate, when I was between the age of, tw um, between the age of like 19 and, and 23, I lived in four countries. Yeah. I, I, I lived in London for university. Yeah. Same actually. Wow. That's funny. Then I moved to Montreal for eight months. Right. Uh, because of my degree, but because also I was like, fuck it, Montreal. Then I moved to Sydney in Australia for four months. Then I moved back to the UK and then I moved to France. Like yeah. all of that within like a, literally a, a two year period. So you're more, and yeah, you're more comfortable when you're young with like uncertainty and stuff like that. Yeah. And then, then you reach a certain age where I don't know what it is. Like I, I can't tell you like the click in my brain. It's like, I'm done with traveling. I'm done with moving around. Like I'm done travel with travel altogether. We talked about this a little bit before we yeah. went live. Like I was in Egypt last week and I, were, you know, I was looking at Egypt, the pyramids in, I was just like, yeah, okay, cool. This is exactly how I imagined it to be. Like, it, cause I've seen. And so a little bit of context for that. I mean, it sounds, that sounds, you know, I don't want to say it sounds shitty, but it sounds it, like it is, but it's not, it's not because I think when you've done a lot of travel, mm -hmm you either have this burning desire and passion to continue mm -hmm. or you're like, okay, I've satiated this desire. I don't need to do this forever. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I, I think that well, and you can, you <clears throat> there's can, always trade offs. You can assimilate that to any other thing in life that you do more and more and more and more. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, I'm trying to think of like the first, you know, like the first romantic relationship you get into, like the first time you fall in love, you're like, Oh fuck. If it's like the seventh time that you fall in love, you're like, all right, I've been down this road. I know what's going to happen. Like this is going to do, do, do whatever. If it's the first time that you're ever using a smartphone, like the first time my mum yeah, like used insane. an iPad and she was able to FaceTime me, she was like, oh my God, this is fucking, you know, she's lived her whole life yeah. and she's like, fuck, there's this thing I can keep in touch with my son yeah. when I call you. Mum, if you're watching, I need to call you desperately. I just haven't had the, the minutes to do it. Yeah. But 
now that she's on her iPad number three, she's like, why isn't this fucking working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, you, 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 it, it, no matter, I think it, it must be like the human brain is like, when you get used to something, you take it for granted. And yes, I take like traveling for granted. For nine years when I worked for Apple, I yeah. was taking 60 flights a year. Yeah. Um, to go to different places, China, Japan, Hawaii, <laughs> the US mainland, fucking Spain, Italy, like all yeah. these countries. And the, the I, like travel is just like seeing new places doesn't excite me anymore. I'm just like, yeah, this is another city. Like it looks like the previous 20 that I've seen. Isn't it fascinating it's how horrible. our biology, horrible. how like we are, we've evolved to adapt quickly, but that's actually like 100% sort of an obstacle if you will uh t on the on the path towards happiness you know like that's totally. it's it's it, your own hardware is working against you mm -hmm. because you just acclimate very quickly to amazing things yeah um <sighs> i need to get you another beer I, you, yes. you're still drinking water yes. so I, i'm not going to pour you uh, 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 uh one of these beers i'm going to get you a beer that one of these guys uh have p ha gave me because a lot of you guys give me free beers so i'm going to get a, a couple of beers that is so nice of you it's more than nice. That's more than nice. What's more than nice? What? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Gi please give me an adjective for more than nice. I want to know what is more than nice. What kind of beers do you like, mate? Do you have anything ombre? Ombre. Uh, Potentiellement. Yes, I definitely do. I just need to find it. Um, on n'a pas parlé en français pour l'instant. Je sais que c'est un, un live stream. Ça se dit comme ça Un live stream Un live Un live euh, qui est majoritairement en, en anglais. Mais bon, on peut aussi répondre aux questions en français. Ça, ça peut se faire. Uh, wow, there's many, many comments. I love the activity. I'm reading them all right now. Extremely nice. Hyper nice. <laughs> Nicer. Sweet. Thoughtful. Généreux. Dame choqué de son accent français. Ah, bah. Euh, je, 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 je. Est-ce que c'est un compliment, ça Right. Peut-être. Enfin. Nicer. Hi. Marseille. We are stupendous. <laughs> uh, right, I've got you some beers. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, off of the chat, I cannot remember who bought me this beer. Uh, for context, on my birthday. A lot of you bought me different beers, and I've forgotten who bought me what beers. This one is definitely from uh, Kristen Kim, uh, and this one is yours. It's it's a it's a hazy IPA. It's from Oakland, California. Ooh, that's why I got it because it's. A, but you'll be drinking out of the can. I want to say thank you to uh, Ines, who said my accent has apparently improved. Uh, where is Ines? Uh, it's up a little bit. But up she a little said bit. Ines Longlois. Ines Longlois. Well, Nathan really feels improved. like your accent has really improved. Bah, voilà. Tu Merci vois? beaucoup. Eh ben oui, mon gars. Eh ben oui. Oh. Eh ben oui. Hey, est-ce que ce serait pas le temps euh, de vérifier les connaissances euh, de Nathaniel, Nathan, euh, en, en, français. en français avec les expressions françaises Oblah. You having trouble opening I that. don't have nails. Oh, I've got nails. Problem. I've got nails. I'm a nail biter. Is the problem. Euh, on va faire ça. Ladies and gentlemen, c'est la partie de, 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 de l'émission où on va tester les connaissances dans les expressions françaises de Nathan, Nathan, Nate, Nathaniel, <laughs> Nathaniel, whatever his name is. Um, Drew. Um, Drew. Uh, je vais faire le, le, le jingle. Le jingle, uh, en gros, l'idée, c'est que vous envoyez-nous vos expressions préférées françaises et on va voir si, uh, si uh, Nathan les connaît. Et sinon, bah, on va les traduire et puis on va avoir du fun avec. Ladies Parfait. and gentlemen, c'est le temps pour la partie de, du show qui s'appelle Express Yourself. 10 me your favorite expressions in English or in French and we'll see if my guest understands them. Listen to that, right? Well, you can, you can, you can pour I, it okay. into... I can, I can chug this. I mean, you can drink it out of the can. I was just like, yeah, I'll do it. And then I completely didn't give you the bottle. Anyway. Uh, right, let's let's fucking have it. Um, right, Tristan Loiseau, avoir les yeux en face des trous. What? Okay, okay, hold on. So, I'm guessing the meaning of these. That is a good beer. I cannot remember who gave you me this, but thank you so much if you're avoir watching. Avoir les yeux en face des trous. Alors, uh, By the way, I, I recently discovered, okay... That was a softer touch on the... I don't know. This is just a natural area where I place my this hand. Is I'm not trying this to is injure perfect. you. This is perfect. Okay. Um, I, I recently <laughs> discovered the reason why we call les flics, uh, the police, uh, les poulets. 
Did you know? Do you know the the the? Alors, uh, we call the police les, les poulets. But this is ignoring Tristan. I will I will we'll, guess on we'll, this. We'll get to Tristan. We'll get to him in a minute. Hold on. Let me let me <coughs> let me get his comment out of the way in case this becomes a clip on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. So we we call it. We Do you want me to start over here and represent this information? <laughs> no. <laughs> so you know why the French say le, les poulets? Yeah, les poulets pour parler des uh, des flics. Because in English we say the pigs. In British um, English. Yeah, well, that's not going to help you. No, but how do you say it in American English? You say the pigs as well? No. No? How do, what, what's your slang term for police in America? Um, hmm. Apart from murderers. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. I actually had, I actually <laughs> thought. I had you that thought you thought. were thinking it, and you were like, I'm not saying I it. I said it for you. No, what? The, I'll need to think about it. I don't know. I don't. So we, we either say the pigs, the the bacon. Well, I mean, you say cops, right? Like, that, that's not a cops. nickname. We don't say cops. We'll say like the, we'll say that the uh, bobbies will say. Bobbies. No, we do not say that. Yeah. Bobbies is because of the hat, the, the, bob, the, right. the bobby hat. Um, there's another word that in well, the US. Sheriff, sheriff, but that's different. No, there's another word in the US that you say when you're like, the heat. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that. The heat, hey, the heat, did, whatever. <laughs> okay, why do the French say les poulets? So, um, if I'm not mistaken, please, uh, les Français, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong here, but I, I think I'm onto something because I learned this a few days ago. Uh, le commissariat mm -hmm. au centre de Paris, mm -hmm. apparemment, avant, mm -hmm. c'était un poulailler ou quelque chose lié au poulet. Donc, tout coup, genre de l'immeuble, l'immeuble. Donc, c'est lié à ça. Please let us know if this is true or not. I, I think uh, uh, I should have looked this up to, to double check. No, but we I like were... it. I like the idea that the, 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 the central police station in Paris it, used to be a chicken coop. Yeah, a hen, yeah or, a, or like some sort of like chicken processing spot like related <laughs> to chicken, <laughs> uh, which I think is awesome. I mean, it's. I, I don't know what else could make sense. I don't even know why we call uh, the police bacon, the pigs or bacon in England. That's what I, that's what I was going to say. That's not going to help you at all. No, but I don't even know why it's related to an animal. I don't know why. Anyway, maybe you can tell us. But anyway, Tristan Loiseau. Okay, avoir les yeux en face des trous. Have your eyes In opposite the holes. the holes. Opposite the holes. I reckon. Do you know this one? You no, know I don't one? know this one. Tristan, please let us know in the comments what this actually means while we discuss it. Oh, les yeux en um, face I think it means. Et caché. Be, be hidden. To be hidden? Yeah, to be hidden. You know, because like maybe you're like looking out, you know, like and you're hidden in a. Ah. En face des trous. I was thinking. Well, that would be more like derrière. I trous. was thinking more like you, you, like you're, you're an intelligent person. You know what's going on. Like, you, you've got your eyes, but you've got your height. You, you've got your eyes opposite the holes, as opposed to if you had your eyes next to the holes, you would be looking into like a blank. Sh Imagine a mask. I'm thinking about a mask, like a, a Halloween mask. If you've got your eyes opposite the holes, you can see everything that's going on and you know what's happening. Whereas if you've got the mask slightly to the side, your eyes are to the side of the holes, not opposite the holes. I don't know. Bien I, I, I didn't understand a thing Tri you just said. Tristan Loiseau, uh, let us know. Oh, Jay Swanson is in the, is in the house. stash. Uh, is he referring I'm, to me? I don't know. I don't know. Hold on. I've got to find Tristan Loiseau in the comments now. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tristan. Because he's going to be the only one that tells us uh, uh, the Americans say pigs. No, we'll go back to the American with the police thing in a second. Coppers. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Tristan Loiseau, where are you in the comments? Let us know what it means, bruv. You can't just give us a fucking comment and then not tell us what it means. Tristan well, Loiseau. There's a lot. We have a lot to guess here. Uh, okay, Alice. I'm going to go with Alice. She says, yes, Paul, it's linked to being lucid. It means to have your ally eyes aligned with the holes, correct? But that's just a literal... It's not helping. Être lucid. Okay, to be... Okay, I yeah, wasn't yeah, far yeah, away yeah, from yeah, it yeah. then. Yeah, so être lucide, c'est très genre... Um, what is that again? It's a very, like, uh, c like clear, th clear thinking. You've got your head on your shoulders. Yeah, very, very clear-minded. You know what? Right. You, you know what's going on. Um, going back to the police, the uh, fuzz, the pigs, the cops, okay, the fuzz. I don't know if we have as many nicknames in well, the United States. Well, because there's a, f uh, a film in England called Hot Fuzz, which is about... Uh, okay, well, we don't say that either. Yeah. Okay, uh, Americans, the bobbies, yeah, okay, la maison... Okay, pig started in 60s slang, very derogatory. It is. Uh, the po the rosas, that's very English as well. Uh, uh, coppers, feds. feds yeah. The feds, but the feds is the FBI. It's not the, it's not the police. 
The feds. The Federal Bureau of Investigation. It's the feds. <laughs> yeah. The police would say in a film, we're going to call in the feds. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. feds are here. So it's not necessarily police. It's more the filth. We say that in English as well. Yeah, oh, the filth. avoir l'estomac dans les talons. What is it? Yeah, have you heard that one? Est avoir l'estomac dans les talons. Peut-être un... No, hold on. That, that's... Hold on. No, tête dans le cul. Hold on. Uh, we we, we got to go back to the to the... The original part of the show was French expressions. We started talking about fucking police, didn't oh we? Oh my god! Well, All right, let, we, we, well, let's go back to so. the, let's go back to the Ameri the the the, 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 the uh, les expressions. All right, let's have this one's a good one. Enora FMC. Pédaler dans la choucroute. Oh. Well, I love the expression rien à voir avec la choucroute ou, ou les choucroutes. I can't remember if it's sing. Ça n'a rien à voir avec la choucroute. I think that is a thing. You yeah, know? it means. Uh, uh, Yeah, it's nothing to do with the yeah. choucroute. It's yeah. it, it it your well choucroute is um is a dish. Yeah, yeah, it's but it's not choucroute in in English. That uh, sauerkraut. It's sauerkraut. There you go. There you go. Uh, so yeah, it's nothing to do with the sauerkraut. Yeah, in 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 French, that just means like you're you're off topic. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about yeah. police in a French expression thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ça n'a rien à voir avec la choucroute. Yeah, but pédaler dans la choucroute. I have a feeling. I have an idea, but I want your idea. Drugs, first. drugs. It's it has to be. It has to be selling drugs. What do you mean drugs? It, this selling drugs has to mean you're selling drugs. It has to. No. You're, I don't know it either. No, I have. What no do idea, you mean? Actually. So, so if you're you're pedaling because you're thinking about the English word I'm to pedal uh, yeah, to pedal what, drugs. What was pedaling? I don't know. Pedaling literally means to pedal like on a bike. Okay, could be slinging. You know, slinging slinging some sh some sauerkraut. <laughs> here's my theory. <laughs> I like it, but here's my theory, and you c you could be right. My theory is, it is like um, being uh, up Shit's Creek without a paddle. Oh, I've heard. I it, feel like I've heard. Imagine this. the street is full of sauerkraut, but like this high. Okay. Imagine trying to pedal through the sauerkraut. It's like you're struggling. Like to. It's like you're. In, there's another phrase in French, ramé. Yeah, ramé. You're but, rowing. But hold on, ramé is much more in the context of like you're kind of trying to like maybe like you're flirting with a with a with a lady and it's not really going anywhere. You're really trying to ram. Yeah, but I think in that con in right? that context, you could say to your mate. Like, hey, là, je suis en train de pédaler dans la choucroute, uh, ça fonctionne pas. Oh, so that's your guess. That's my guess. All right, let's see if that's right. Enora, is that the guess? Is that the, is that what it is? Enora, let me scroll down to the bottom. Um, You're not going anywhere. Uh, là, vous pédalez dans la choucroute. Thibaut, uh, Paul is on fire. Uh, wading through the treacle. Oh, fuck. In trouble. Uh, you're in trouble. Yeah, you're in the shit. Okay, nothing to do with drugs. Claire Amélie says nothing to do with drugs. Uh, Whatever. I mean, for me, it is. So uh, bingo. Paul is right. Okay, there we go. Yes, Paul, it's possible. We oui, uh, mal s'y prendre. Mal s'y prendre. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I guess it's yeah. I mean, ga galérer. Galérer. Je suis en train de galérer. So, so ramer. Yeah, yeah. Je suis en train de ramer. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. Like, ramer, like, pédaler dans la choucroute. The yeah. visual thing is, like, you're trying to pedal yeah. in a field full of sauerkraut. Yeah. Like, yeah. how thick is that stuff? Like, you got the sausages, you got the fucking choufleur, whatever that is in English, yeah. the cabbage. Uh, choufleur, yeah. <laughs> it's complicated. Have, uh, you, have, you, have you ever had, um, uh, you know how they're doing, like, um, actually, no, just kidding. What is um, cauliflower in French? Cauliflower in French choufleur? is just choufleur, yeah. It's a, it's also ca cabbage is no cabbage cabbage is, is chou chou right chou right right right, right. and chou cauliflower fleur is cauliflower the the memo technique is flower fleur yeah 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 chou fleur that makes sense right uh, let's do a couple of more expressions ladies and gentlemen uh, I'm gonna go back up to the top because we've this 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 session oh être rond comme une queue oh, no I've, I've I feel like I've heard this one before Tosca Nuri Nuri comme Tosca être rond comme une queue de pelle <laughs> I don't know have you do you know this one no What do you think it means? Wow, this is. I feel like in the past you've known all of them. I normally know all of them, and for once I know none of them. There's some of them I know, like Pissé dans la violon that GM has suggested, okay, but we've done okay, that okay, so okay, many so times. Let's break this down. Une pelle is a shovel. It's a shovel. Uh, rond is round, so to be round like the like uh, the edge, the end of a shovel. The, yeah. Yeah. Like for me, this expression just means you're fat. How about how about more like uh, well well. Like you're as fat as the the round part of a shovel. Because être rond comme une queue de pelle, 
You've got like it's like me. Dumb, right? no, it, no, no, oh, no. Dumb? It's definitely. I feel like well, it's not definitely anything. I'm guessing, but I feel like it could mean you're dumb. Like, you know, t'es pas le. Uh, how, what is it again? T'es pas l'outil le plus. Uh, no, no, t'es pas le couteau le plus le plus uh, um, aiguilleux. Le... T'es pas le couteau le plus aiguillé du tiroir. Aiguillé, oui, voilà. Ok, I fucked that one up, but whatever. Ok, it means you're drunk. It means you're drunk. You're drunk. Euh, well, t'es bourré, mais vraiment bourré. Il y a un lien là. Il y a un lien là, non Parce que t'es bourré, t'es es, es, es vraiment pas dans, dans ton état le plus euh, intelligent. Donc du coup, euh, voilà. Aiguisé. <rire> voilà. Aiguisé. <rire> Control, alt, supprimé, euh, says Paul Taylor. Euh, C'est ton état après les lives. Uh, it's how I am after all my lives. You're pretty drunk right now, right? Right now, I'm doing all right. You got, you improved? No, 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 no. I haven't oh, improved. Oh, you're doing all right. I'm oh, doing all right. I'm doing gotcha. good. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm I, it's not like I have to get up at 6 a.m. to go to London tomorrow. Oh, London. Um, oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, wow. My train is at 9 a.m. Wow, buddy. My train. Wow. I'm not sleeping tonight. I think that's what's happening. What? That's not a good idea. I've tried that, and that's never worth it. It's never it worth isn't, it. It isn't, but I, I'm not really doing anything. It's not... I'm, it's not I'm only going to... Have you heard of a venue called the Shepherd's Bush Empire? No. Okay. Well, have you heard of a venue called Radio City Music Hall? Uh... No. Okay, well then, then, then you're right. You're just, a, you're just a. You I don't know. know. I don't, I don't, I don't think I do enough like uh, live events and whatnot. Well, Radio you know? City Music Hall is in New York. Uh, the Beacon Theatre. Okay. Uh, anyway, it's a, it's, a, it's a. Pr it, basically, put it this way: that Shepherd's Bush Empire in London is, um, is a legendary music venue where the Rolling Stones <laughs> have played, where David Bowie has played, where Elton John has played, where. Most recently, Ed Sheeran, like Coldplay. Oh, it's like a legendary music theatre. I'm finishing my show there end of January. Look at this guy. I know, fucking what? Um, and so tomorrow, I'm doing a day trip to London. We leave at 9 a.m. And we come back at 11 p.m. Because we're visiting the venue to wow. see where we put the cameras, what the light and the sound is going to look like. It's basically like a scouting. Anyway, That's all sick. that to say is, what time is it? 8.43? I'm getting up in... Le already less time than I would normally like yeah! to sleep. Wait, so you try to shoot for like, uh, you, what, what do you try to shoot for? Like a, a good eight, nine hours, 10 hours? 10 hours is a lot. Of sleep? Yeah. No, I mean, right now, it's I try and get eight. Yeah. If I get eight, I'm happy. You know you're not getting eight if you're spending eight in bed. You're not getting oh, eight. Oh, totally, yeah. Nobody's sleep efficiency is no, 100%. No, no, no. I, I, I and mean, for me, I have this aura ring that, that tracks. <laughs> and, you you know, whatever. You can get, you know. I've got my watch that tracks it, yeah. And, in like, if it's, like, 80% efficiency, like, I'm doing great, you know? Like. I'm in bed for, like, 12 hours, and I get about, <laughs> and I get about six hours of sleep. <laughs> wow. Like well, li literally. All right, let's explore. I mean, alcohol definitely doesn't help. <laughs> alcohol doesn't help. That's a misconception. Alcohol does not help you sleep. Oh, it absolutely does it's not help. It's much yeah. more um, like uh, it's it's less quality sleep, and you're waking up throughout the night and you're not remembering it because you know maybe you know if you're drunk. Mm -hmm. um, do you drink a lot of caffeine? Not a huge amount. No. Oh, you're not that European then. To be, <laughs> to no, be. I'm, no, I'm not that European. I'm very English. In English, we don't drink coffee. I mean, I say that. We drink tea. There's a lot less caffeine in tea than there okay, is in, in all coffee. All right, all right, fair enough. I drink a couple of cups of tea, but not usually after like 3 or 4 p.m. Okay, a tricky question here. Do you feel like uh, the British are, I mean, look, <laughs> this is launching us in another direction. Do you feel like the British are less European? Oh, for so, sure. Whatever that means. Yeah, of course. Okay. I mean, we, we know that, you know, the UK and is now out. but Well, I would say we're less Southern European in the sense I feel like Italy, France and Spain and like Greece. Is Portugal part of that? Portugal is part of that as well. The pigs. <laughs> right? The pigs. Yeah. Portugal, Italy, Greece, Spain. There you go. Pigs. Okay. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. But because it's a thing... Obviously, for they you, are, that's the cops, but yeah, yeah, exactly. But they're more, they're, 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 I feel like their cultures are a, a lot more similar to Germany, the Netherlands, Belgium, Sweden, Norway, okay, so, Finland. So, but back to my question less European? I mean, what is European? Who what is European? Who takes the, is it, are you, when you, when you define European, are you taking uh, Germany, Belgium, France, Italy, Spain, and just mixing it together? And by the I way, should, we're I mean, totally ignoring. Eastern Europe. I mean, like, of course, we're, we're talking yeah. about 
Western and Central and some Southern Europe. Well, it's basically, yeah. Like, the, it, when you're talking about, I mean, it's the same thing of like, well, American, what are you talking about? You're talking about Texas or you're talking about New York no, or you're talking about Oregon? No, this is not the same thing at all. I mean, it look, is exactly the same you thing. You can go most places in the United States and see like a American flag out, you know, or I mean more in certain places than others, admittedly. That's true. But you know, like yeah, but you that's know, for me you'll that's see an American flag in Texas just like you'll see it in New York, you know? Yeah, but that for me isn't like a defining thing. Like Okay, we're all speaking the same language. Okay, that's fair enough. You know, you'll find strip malls that resemble you know, they look yeah, almost mate, the same. Yeah, but mate, you go to any city center in Europe there's an H and M. There's a Zara. There's a Mango. Yeah, that's true. That's true. There's a Carrefour. Like, or if it's not a Carrefour, it's the German version of Carrefour. Like, it, <laughs> like it's not the same brands. But for me, it's like the the. But yeah, I agree. When you say European, what do we mean? Because there's for me there's a there's a there's a clear difference between Southern Europe, Northern Europe, in terms of the mentality of the people, in terms of the way the cities yeah. are built. In terms of like what's important, and this in life. is part of why I love this continent so much, you know. But for me, it's just, for me that's the same as the U.S. Like in, it's uh, we haven't mentioned Northern Europe at all, which is like you know we are like Scandinavia. Well, like for Sweden? me, we're for me we're closer to to Northern Europe than we are to Southern Europe. We're kind of in like this middle place where geographically, I mean, we are attached, but there's a there's a there's a sea between us. But if you look, if you go under the sea, like we're still attached at the fucking plate right we're still on the continental plate but uh because we're an island it creates a different and because we're an island nation it's a different thing if you if mallorca or corsica or sardinia were not part of their respective countries uh it might be a similar thing because ireland and yeah but they're literally trapped in the mediterranean sea so you know yeah but cyprus is its but own i'm asking si- a different question i want to know what is I'm asking an impossible question. I get it. Like, there's no purpose to this, but I'm just curious. If there was one country that was like the most European, like what? Like no. when you're thinking, like what is it? Because like you know, it, it it sort of depends. It sounds like Germany is the heart of like the of the you know of the euro. But the right? same question. No, right? No, no not no. even no. But but, I'm, but, but it, hold on. France is exporting. You know, the, the, France exports more culture. You know, they're like number one in soft power, according to I don't know who. Right, so you let know? me ask you the same question. What city <clears throat> in the US or what state is the most American? Yeah, that's... that's it's the same question. For me, It we are the United States of Europe. We don't speak the same language. We don't follow the same rules. I agree with that. But we do because Europe has its own set of rules. I agree with that. I, I'm asking an impossible question, but look, so look... People are saying France, of course. I mean, influ- you have a biased audience, but like of course. Holland is the most European. I want to know the reasons why, right? France, Luxembourg. But what I'm curious about, multiple people saying Luxembourg, I'm curious about that. The, the the reason I'm asking is because we all have some idea in our head. And the truth is... Well, for you as a non-European... Well, I'm just what- curious because you're not thinking, you're probably not thinking about Russia, right? When you're thinking about whatever European means. And well, I'm thinking about like a chunk I'm, of it's in Europe, a chunk of it's not. Like, but you're not. I don't well, know if you're thinking. Do you think Moscow when you think like Europe? I do. You do just because it's in Europe. Okay, but if if you go all the way out to Eastern Russia, I'm like, no, that's in Asia. Like, it's it's a different. Like for me, Europe. Like, because you could also say, well, Istanbul technically is in Europe, half of it, and the other half is in Asia. Right. Like, you cross the river and you're in Asia, right. technically, geographically speaking, right? But for me, I, I mean, it's weird. Again, it's different because as an Eastern European, you have a different upbringing than a Western European. I'm just, okay, I just, I, I, I'm just asking this question because t- to counter your point, I think that if you said like, oh, is there a most American place? Like probably everybody outside of the United States thinks like, you know, if they were plopped into Texas, they might think like, yeah, this is the most American. Or maybe some people would make arguments for like, you know, a, you know New York or whatever. But it, like th- w- there's like an idea, like a like a kind of like a thumbnail, if if you will. Well, the th- the thing the thing with, with the thing with non Americans, when we think of America, that what we either think of is New York or L A. Just because most culture has come out of the U S. has come from those cities, whether it's rap music, right, which has explored both of those, whether it's TV shows, Friends, which is based in New York, whether it's all of Hollywood, which is based in L A. Like those are the two cities that we go. 
that represents America as non-Americans. Right. Now, having been to America about 50 times, I understand that it's completely not the... Like, right. I fucking love Portland. I've, I've been there a couple of times. I love Portland. I love a bunch of different cities. I've been to, like, the, I've been to Alabama. I've been to all weird sorts yeah. of places. New Orleans, different vibe. Chicago, different vibe. Right. But when you're from the outside, which so, and this is why it's an interesting question that you're asking yeah. me as a European, what feels more European? Because I'm like, well, as you as an American, what's more American? Yeah. Well, and I just, I mean, I know for there's no question that uh, like Western and Southern Europe dominates the like the the culture, the culture battle here. You know, like because because yeah. it's like we're not thinking of for better or for worse. I mean, like, and I I don't think this is a, this is right, but we're not thinking about Slovakia. When no. we're having a conversation about like no, but that's also a population thing. Like you take what? no, no, because look, Portugal is having its moment, and Portugal's got like ten million people. You know, Denmark, Denmark is what is Denmark? Denmark's like five million. Am I off? Uh, it's it'll be around that. Denmark, it's, it's not more Denmark than Denmark has pl- gets plenty of attention. You know, does it? Huga, Huga, yeah. Does it? Yeah. Maybe in America it does, but in Europe it doesn't. Okay, whatever. Okay, the Netherlands. The Netherlands has can be more than ne- okay. Denmark population. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. I'll give you the. I'll give you the. I'll give you the. The argument that the, the Netherlands. Six million. Sweden, ten million. Come on. Sweden's one sixth. Not even one sixth of France, and th- you know right. we know pop- about Swedish fish, and they love saunas, and you know like there's 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 like. I think the problem. I think that the, 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 yeah, and you're right. And I think the thing with Western, uh, Eastern Europe, is that because a lot of those countries were ex USSR, their culture is a lot more similar. It, like if you were to compare Sweden and Spain, the culture is way more different yeah. than two countries in Eastern Europe that are equally distant geographically. Like if you go to um, Albania or you go to Lithuania, they're probably distance-wise the same as Spain and Sweden. Yeah. But the cultures are, 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 more, are closer to each Careful other. Careful what think. you say. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. They might t- totally disagree. But they I, will because. But from the external perspective, of I get course, what you're it's saying. like when we go to the US and we go, yeah, all Americans are the same. You're like, well, no, because Texas has its own thing. Connecticut has its own thing. Yeah. Uh, fucking Oregon has its own thing. And you're yeah. like, yeah, but from the outside, everyone thinks Americans are the same. It's like from the outside, everyone thinks everyone in the UK is the same. Even within a country, people are different. How many times have you said, oh, he's from north of France? Oh, he's from the south of France? Yeah. Within the country, it's already different. So it's an interesting question. Yeah. Um, it's interesting what, 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 you know, we're getting, could you scroll up a little bit? We're getting a lot of interesting the, hot the, takes the, the, on this topic. Uh, mate, there's fucking loads of good questions. Where are we still doing for the expressions? Maybe we No, the expressions it. are finished now. <laughs> like we, we stopped the expressions. <laughs> Sorry, half an hour Sorry, ago. Folks. Um, Seattle rocks. You European get... heart is the blue banana for me. What is that? Where's that? The blue banana for me. I think I... that's 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 um that's like a hold on. I've heard this before. I don't know what blue banana is. Uh, but yeah, I don't think there's a real answer of like what's the what's the most European country. It doesn't. There isn't one. You can say yeah. Uh, the, the, the the by population you can go all right. Germany, UK, France. And then everyone else, like, you drop down, like, 20 million to get to the next city. Isn't it so fascinating? Like, look, in the United States, we have flyover states, right? Like, where people, like, you know, it's like, there's squares on a map, you know? And and obviously, there's culture, there's life happening, you know? But, like, that they have that name. Here, that's the blue banana right there. Oh, the blue banana. It touches, conveniently, London. (laughs) I've got to show you. Hold on. Close, Close your face. Uh oh. Uh, there you go, it worked. Did it work? Yeah. There you go, the blue banana. So that's the so blue banana. So that doesn't even include France. Uh wait, what did he say? A chunk of it, yeah. The Europe you, part. Oh, uh, um, not a chunk of it. Well, not, I guess like, it kind of ignores France. Yeah. It basically goes the north of Italy, the whole of Switzerland, fuck off. Uh <laughs> a lot of Germany, all of the Netherlands, Belgium and uh Luxembourg. Lille and Lille. And like up to fucking Manchester in England, but it doesn't include Marseille. Fuck off! Is that yeah, the centre of that's Europe? That's not right. That's not right. Sorry. I mean, it's it's an interest. It's a super interesting conversation. So what? So what I was saying was, it's interesting how there's flyover states and there's countries that get way less attention, like in Europe. And it's so interesting how geographically, and this is true. I mean, this is true about everything in life. Everything is inequality is is sort of a 
a fact of life. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not defending the inequalities that exist, but I'm just saying that like, it's like the 80, 20 rule, right? Like it's chaos theory, mm-hmm. right? Like things are always unevenly distributed. And it's so fascinating to me that certain pockets of the world, like Europe as a whole is a small percent of the world's landmass and had its moment over the last 500 years. Yeah. Dominating like not, not in a, like, not, not in a positive way, right? Like through it, like colonization and whatnot, but yeah. still like a small chunk has way like a disproportional amount of power and it's weird how these pockets yeah. pop up like how it happened you know like how totally paris agree, yeah. happened in the 1920s you know how the hell did so many s- incredible artists all like end up together you know yeah it's such a good point uh, el medi disagrees with me and i uh, and, and it's a fair point what's common between latvia and Tur- turkmenistan both ex-ussr fair point i gave two examples of random countries because I'm not from that part. So we think that everyone it's, that's the thing. It's so, it's fucking fascinating. Um, how many people are watching right now? How many people? 345. So not a lot of people. Okay. That's a lot. I mean, to me, that's a lot. Uh, Europe is the most diverse part of the world. Uh, disagree. Uh, it's the most diverse linguistically, maybe in such a small space, but well, I mean, I don't know. D- diversity is a hard thing to define, right? Like, diverse. What is it? Diverse. There, there, you got a total range of political. You know, it's fair. You know what I mean? There's like, uh, I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of diversity in many of the major cities. I don't know. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. No, but yeah, I th- I agree. But I, I don't know if it's the most diverse part. Again, what's it's the most diverse? Because we're in it, and we're like, yeah, there's so many different. Like you yeah, fly, yeah, yeah, you yeah, fly yeah. one hour that way, you're in a different country. You walk one hour that way, you're in a different country. You know, right. you're like, yeah, but all right, cool. But there's other places like like Southeast Asia where you're just like, oh, there's so many dive. But we're all like, oh yeah, they're all the same. Right. Like I am with my fucking West Eastern Europe. Do you know what I mean? So it's like it's always a part. It's always perspective. Yeah. It always depends where you are and where you're from. Um. So, uh, c'est culturel ce soir. Uh, j'espère que. Who said it's c'est culturel ce soir? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It is cultural. Tonight. I hope we're not boring you with. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might be super boring. That's why there's it, only. It, it, actually, India. That's that's a fair point. No, India is more diverse linguistically. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. There, there, there are like twenty-five, at least twenty-five, official languages, right? No, oh, oh, there you go. Over two. Oh, I should read Wait, the over two hundred languages Nabhata, spoken Nabhata, in Manhattan alone. Yeah, but I mean that's all bollocks. As oh, well. that's okay. New York. Well, there you go. It's all bollocks. Like everyone, like I, when I lived in Montreal, everyone was like, "Yeah, Montreal's the most most diverse." Everyone says their you know, own city's the most diverse. It it's is really bollocks. interesting to me how how we define diversity because, like, yeah, New York is a place where you have like every nationality you can possibly think of. Yeah, but, but in Paris as well. But hold on, I was going to say that in New York. It's there's this kind of like, like um, it's a, there's a very kind of homogenous sort of way of thinking. I mm-hmm. think of like work, work really hard. You know, like and it, like for me, like New York is the heart of the capitalistic machine. Yeah. You know, and I feel yeah. like you go there, you're going for new opportunities, and you work hard. That's the religion for everybody. You know, is that diverse? I don't know if that's Not really. diverse. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I, I completely agree with you. Like just, just I mean, obviously, it's a very linguistically diverse place. I'm not gonna deg- disagree. Yeah, but with everywhere that. is like London. E- e- London is fucking li- linguistically diverse as well. You've got the whole of Europe that comes to London to work. You've got the whole of uh, like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. Look, with all when of their I was in London, languages. I visited with my family, and we and when we were in London, I don't think I met one like Brit. I mean, it was it was. Every restaurant, every hotel was like somebody from a different yeah. spot. But it's the same in Montreal. It's the same every, in every big city in the world. Everyone's like, oh, we're the most culturally that fuck off. It's just it, th- like everyone's trying to up themselves. So here's a perfect example of like cities trying to be better than other cities. And I noticed this and it was a depressing thought that I had. When there's a terrorist attack in any like big country, um, any country where there's like a lot of people dead or whatever, it, and, and and honestly, it's like Western countries, right? No one, because for some reason, Western countries don't give a fuck about what happens in non-Western countries. But when the uh, terrorist attacks happened in Paris in 2015, 130 odd people died in the theater. Blah blah blah. The whole every monument in the Western world was in competition with each other on Instagram about how can we make the French flag fit into our Empire State Building or the London Eye or 
the Sao Paulo, what, what like it just it was it, it became like this the, this competition of like we're the better city because so you didn't feel like it was out of solidarity at all. Honestly, no. It was because the people they knew that people were going to take photos of there because the article the next day on Huffington Post was like, oh, the ten cities that. Oh yeah, that, that that were in solidarity, and then you know the next day it was Lebanon. You know they put the yeah. it, and because the French flag is very easy to represent in lights, red, yeah. white, and blue, as is the UK flag, as is the Netherlands flag, yeah. as is any flag that's American, the red, white, and blue. Yeah. Very easy to create some cool lights. Right. I do it on my fucking stand up show. Yeah. The background of my stand up show is red, white, and blue. You know what's e so interesting? These cities are all competing with each other because it's kind of like the world of dating. You know, you're always trying to attract the best talent, the best whatever. You know, like it's always because like, you know, uh, you know, uh, whatever, New York or London or Paris or whatever are trying to attract the best talent, the best people, mm -hmm. because otherwise they'll just go somewhere else. Like it's this constant, I mean, it's human nature, you know? Yeah. Um, right. Question for you. Completely changing topics because okay. we will keep talking about this in part two of the live. Yes. Uh, part two of the live, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, is exclusively available um, on, <laughs> on, on patreon.com. Exclusively Paul. available on Patreon, patreon.com slash Paul Taylor. Uh, basically, the way these lives work, hour one is for free. Hour two is uh, we get even more in depth of this kind of shit. Patreon.com is a place where artists, we can, you know, we can gain money by providing exclusive content. But before we do part two, uh, we've done this before uh, to learn a bit of a Quebecois. Ah, uh, yes. Some Quebecois expressions. Is it too late for that? Do we have time? It is not too late for that because he's been on the, he's been waiting for fucking ages. I was just waiting for the, uh, for the, for, for the, the time to be like, hey, let's transition to Québécois. And on a um, jamais eu l'opportunité. So I, I fucking did the transition for you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is time to learn some expressions in French Québécois because they're all fucked up compared to French French. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me do the jingle first and I will explain what's going on. Here's the jingle. Québécois. Ça va, Pinaille. Ça va, Ladies and gentlemen, my friend Rolly Asal, stand-up comedian based in Montreal, uh, gives us uh, he gives us a taste of uh, Le Québec. You need to put your headphones on. I forgot to mention that. Ah, uh, yes. But uh, bien sûr. So that we can hear what he's actually saying. Uh, right, Rolly, let's get him on the left-hand side of the screen. Rolly is here. Oh, là, let's, oh wait, hold on. Là. He's not there. He's not there yet. He's not il there. There he is. Arrive. Il arrive il est là, avec là. de l'alcool. <laughs> Alcoolisé, bien alcoolisé, tellement il c'était ennuyant. Dude, regardez notre conversation, c'est ça? Are you drinking rum out of a bottle? Uh, c'était vraiment long, hein? <laughs> And I'm eating sour patches. Sour patches, I don't know what sour patches are. Ça fait plaisir euh, de te revoir. Ça fait longtemps. I'm so lonely. <laughs> Mais. Oh. Il est pas en train. C'est pas vraiment du rhum ça. Ouais, mais je bois pas pour vrai. J'ai pris une petite gorge. J'ai pris une petite gorgée. Franchement, je sais pas. I just had a moment there where I was like, your accent became a little bit more québécois. Oh ben il a. I know. Ben oui. Of course. En te parlant. You know. Ouais. Tu sais que Paul is swearing in québécois when he gets mad. This is kind of true. Um... When you I get angry, him. I swear. Uh, the only one I know is tabarnak. Yeah. And, and, tabarnak. And, and I love the expression. Um, What is it again? Papier pantoute. Oh, c'est Papier pantoute. It's not not that bad. Not so bad. Papier not so pantoute. Bad. It's Papier like tan, it's not bad. Not bad. Papier pantoute. Okay. Papa, oh, that that's was, one expression job. out of a hundred. Dude, today I have What? very very special expression for you. Nathaniel. Oh my god! No, really? Yes, like very hard expressions, but very funny ones. Okay. Some expressions that we don't, that we rarely use, but when you use them efficiently, they are really funny. Does Paul know? Does Paul know? I, I might know some of them. I don't, uh, no, pour, dude, like I've I've worked my ass off finding those expressions. Pour vrai, parce que, like, I've been doing this for a year. Uh, uh, you worked on something, you didn't work on your lighting situation. <laughs> Oh! 
you worked on the expressions, but not. Whoa! You're so dark. It looks like you're in a cave or something. Whoa! Well, it's it's it. It's, it's, it's oh, quand même you know, Canada. You know, you know why? Why? You know why? You know why? Because my settings on my camera are set for before that we changed the time. Là maintenant, il fait plus. Ah, tabarnak! <laughs> Ah! Uh, filter? Does he does he use like an ND filter? Well, no, okay, I don't whatever. know. He just there we go. He's gonna overexpose himself. There though. we go. No, oh, there so. we go. There, that's a bit better. There we go. Now we can see your background. Can you lower the light that's on you? It's, it's a little bit bright. Nah, that's right. Dude, you're asking too much, right? <laughs> 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 this is Kev. basic setting. Kev says so rude. <laughs> Camera yep. and Raleigh's the man I'm cave. Just Kev says so nah. rude. Yeah. Sex dungeon, uh, according to Nick Jones. Nick Jones, apparently, Rolly, uh, <laughs> it's your sex dungeon. I'm actually <laughs> using a window. That's why I'm not using it. It's, it's natural light. Oh, shit. Go on. So what are your, uh, what are, what's the expressions that, uh, Lola. Okay. Lola. Oula. Oula. Did you almost spill that beer all over? J'ai failli faire tomber, ouais. <laughs> Alors, la première expression. Um... Je vais la mettre dans le chat. Ah, fuck, I hate that. To put it in the chat, I need the YouTube uh, link, right? Vas-y. Oh, because you know, you can't do it on the e can, can I? Can I, wait, can I, while we wait, can I just share a funny little anecdote? I, I didn't realize, I, I, you know, you know how you can say mon gars? It's like my, my, mon my gars. dude. My dude, yeah, ouais, mon gars. I was saying for a while, mon cum. Like, oh. like, same sort of, like, you know, like, my dude, mon cum is like, it's like my boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, like my... So I was saying that to my, to like dudes, like my friends, you know, and, and nobody right. fucking uh. said anything until one day, one of them's like, you understand that that's like, you know, there's like a little bit of like, you're sort of calling me your boyfriend. I was like... Well, yeah, when you're not, uh, when you're not expecting it, you might be like, oh, and maybe everyone <laughs> didn't say anything because they were like, oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. oh, fair enough, okay. Yeah, so there you go. Because, Don't make well, my we mistake. Say, unless you, we, we I mean, say unless mon, you want mon chum. We say mon chum here, like C-H-U-M, mon chum. Like, like chum, like chum. Um, in, in, in English, you would say my man. Hey, what's up, my man? My dude, my dude. My dude. My dude. Or my, my man, yeah, my man's, yeah. My man. Or my man's. You my man's? Say that too. Who yeah. says my man's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Did you find a YouTube link, Rolly? Yes, I did, but Rolly, it's another Rolly computer, so I need prêt. to log in. Je t'ai... Oh, cool, yes. <coughs> Là, j'ai besoin de... C'est vraiment compliqué. La technologie a eu de la merde. Hein? <laughs> Laurie <laughs> says the thing needs two disconnect. hours just live for himself. <laughs> just, just give me a second. All right, you you're just like, picking come... up co comments that big you up, mate. <laughs> No. Just give me a second. No. Uh, it's all right. I get it. You're on a different computer. Your computer, exactly. he, he fucked his computer oh, up. So he's using his I girlfriend's computer. computer. Yeah. Um, c'est le verlan de... De, 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 de mec. Uh, de no, mec. no. Ouais, de mec. De mec. Comme c'est le verlan de mec, pas Mac. Uh, oh, voilà. Because that would be weird. Like, oh, did you just buy a new computer? Ouais, je me suis acheté un com. Oh, okay, hold on. Really, really quick. Really uh, quick. I come pro. Why? I, I come, bro. <laughs> Just because the the this person is called Fanny Ott. Uh, what was the meaning of <laughs> what was the meaning of Fanny in uh, in the UK? Because I don't remember. Mate, every time we talk about this, not <laughs> not we, but just like Fanny in British English means it's, vagina. Yeah, okay. Uh, That's what and I figured. Fanny in American English means uh, backside. So right, so fanny pack is just like hilarious to you. Is that what you know? Yeah, because we call it a bum bag. A bum, ba a bum bag. A bum, a bum bag. bag. A bum bag. Do you know what I mean? You should do a technical rolly jingle. Maybe we should. Uh, right, uh, Florian Beaufreton. Hey, ladies and got gentlemen. It. Got it. Shout out to Florian Beaufreton, who is the uh, the legend that uh, right now is editing all of the clips that you see on this channel. The legend. shorter clips uh, of the, all the lives is Florian Beaufreton. Uh, he's an absolute fucking legend. Uh, so uh, we should do it, uh, uh, it, 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 the technical because there's a technical Taylor jingle, but for now I've been fucking flawless today. Oh, oh yeah, avoir un pain au four. Avoir. Ah, uh, okay. Rolly Asal is in the comments. There, there he is. Bah. Avoir. Right. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I I almost want to say like you gave me this expression last time. No. No, I've never given that. You to gave you. me something uh, related to four or fourré. Ouais. Fourré. Ouais. <laughs> Wait, Fuck you remembered wait. it. 
Fooly, hey, it's my fooly, là. Okay, that was, that uh, was, and that was like a really sexual, right? Or yes. No? Uh, yeah, everything fooly is the fuck. Have sex. Yeah. Right. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna guess this one, but I'm gonna let but, you guess first. Avant, avant, au fou. I, since they are hard ones, j'avais des choix de réponse en fait. Ah. Ok, mais est-ce qu'on peut... Il y a plusieurs Attends, sens. On, oui. on va deviner... Oui. Il y a plusieurs ouais. sens. On va deviner le, le truc avant que tu aies tes trucs. Avoir un Dude. pas en four. To okay. have... Toi, tu connais cette, euh, cette expression No, okay. but I have an idea because we have a very similar expression in British English. We say to have a bun in the oven. Ok, so this is sexual. No. I mean, it started sexually, but having a bun in the oven is not sexual anymore. Because you guys um, don't, you don't, you guys don't know this expression to have a bun in the oven. No. No. In British English, it means to be pregnant. You have a bun oh, in the oven. Oh, that makes sense. Right? That totally makes Look, sense. Avoir un pain au four sounds very similar to have a bun in the oven. So that is my guess, but I might be completely wrong. Uh, oh, yeah, I mean that's What's that's not. I I need to find another. Okay, I'll try to find an alternative here because I, I would agree with that. I would say otherwise, it's... Uh, Apparently, they say bun in the oven in the US as well. Thanks, Tyler. Um, maybe, okay, just as an alternative, since I, it may be vulgar, because I just had that association with you at this point, maybe it's like you got to take a dump, you know? It's like, yeah, t'as un pain au four, quoi. Ah, il faut chier. Ah, okay. Eh, c'est pas fou, ça. But it's not that, pas fou. based on your reaction. Voici les choix. Un... Trop manger okay. de gluten. <rire> Deux, aller, man, aller à la boulangerie. Trois, faire un dessert. Ou quatre, être enceinte. Yeah, être enceinte. Yeah. Ça doit être ça. Ça, c'est la... Ah, c'est cool, ça. Tu peux mettre les deux, tabarnak. Je, je mets les deux, euh, euh, mais je joue avec euh, pour que ça couvre pas nos faces. Je peux poser une question vite fait là. Tabarnak, bien évidemment, c'est un... un, un, un... C'est grossier, non euh, mais vu que les Français se moquent tout le temps de ce terme, est-ce que ça enlève un petit peu la puissance du mot Ou vous, vous, you don't give a fuck I don't, We don't give a fuck, on s'en tabarnak. Okay. Uh, <laughs> which we, we, don't, we don't care. No, I think it's, les Français, it's one of the words that they, I think it's the only word that they refer to when, when they think about Québécois, yeah. we have plenty of words. It's, yeah, but it's basically the most powerful word, but we, like, we don't care. You don't care. It's still very powerful. It's the yeah. most powerful. It's one of the most powerful words. Yeah. It, uh, it, yeah. They don't so even we, say it properly. They say tabernacle. It's tabernacle. So, like, at some point. Tabernacle. Tabernacle. Uh, are we going with number four to be pregnant? Yeah. It's All right. C'est c'est une bonne réponse. Écoutez, elle était quand même. Ah, hein, c'était bon, mais pousser un gros caca, c'était quand même une belle option aussi. Hein. Ouais. Trop manger de gluten, aller à la boulangerie. Ça, c'est juste l'expression. C'est juste chier un coup, quoi. Voilà. Tout voilà. Ça. Exactly. Deuxième uh, expression qui est okay. quand même euh, très difficile. Euh, right. On augmente le niveau un peu. Alors, je... Euh, Paul, euh, put that um, on the screen. It's, it's coming on the screen. Alors, <laughs> baiser oh, le cul la, du la, diable la, quand la, il la. est fret. Donc, baiser le cul du diable quand il est fret. Fuck the evil's bum when it's cold. The evil, the devil, the devil, the devil. The devil. Le diable. Yeah, wait, fuck the devil's bum when it's cold. It's a fuck, fuck the, de okay. the devil's <laughs> bum when it's cold. Alors, baiser le cul du diable. I love this one. I don't know what it means, but... Uh... Um, okay. Mais pensez avec une logique. Like, think about you doing the act. Um, um, okay, so, le diable... Le di Ow! Oh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Le diable... He he lives in hell. So so when would he be cold? Let's let's work through the the calculus here. You know, he, when would he ever be cold? I was thinking less of that. I was thinking more like, what would his bum feel like when it's cold? Because in theory, but, uh, but but in theory he would never be cold. No, and in theory he's fucking a lot in 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 hell. Oh there's really? A, there's, oh, a, right, there's a right, lot of right. people. There's a lot of people. Fucking the devil up the ass because we've done a lot of bad well, things. It's more in like life. the other way around, right? Probably, yeah. So that's the thing. The, the only reason I'm thinking so, baiser le cul du diable is like something that you do when you go to hell because that's what you're condemned to do for the rest of eternity. But if it's cold, if his ass is cold, you know, you like shrink a little bit when you're cold. 
I think that it means something is difficult. Like if you're like, hey, Paul. Oh, oh, oh. Like you're having trouble getting it up. Is that what you're saying? No, just difficult in general. Like, hey, what's it like uh, doing a live stream uh, from Paris to Montreal with all of this technical setup? I might say, ouais, c'est comme baiser le cul du diable quand il est frais. Like it's so difficult. Like imagine trying to have sex with a devil when it when he's fro when it's cold. Like your ass contracts when you're cold. Yeah. So it's difficult to penetrate. So for me it just means difficult. That's my that's where my mind went. Uh um, Where did your mind go with where is the devil when he's cold? No, I was kind of thinking like no no, but I don't even believe in this theory, but I was kind of thinking like you know you're kind of like uh, trying to get laid, but the options aren't great. And you're kind of, it's just like a shitty situation. You've uh, stayed out at too late, you know. But I don't like that. I like your explanation more. <laughs> Very interesting. I like yours. The difficult part, yeah, it, it makes sense. But what if I tell you that you actually did fuck the devil's bum? You, you actually made it. Oh. To a like, it's so difficult but you were actually oh, able oh, oh, to do oh, it oh you did the impossible you pulled off the impossible you did you did what because the, okay so i was on to something because the the le diable it don't you know it's it's fucking burning hell down there it's, he's never cold so you pulled off the impossible that's it that's my that's my answer okay uh, i i want to say bravo about um, uh, je vais mettre les choix de réponse. Alors, est-ce que c'est... Attends. Est-ce que c'est... <rire> un, essayer de tricher. Deux, être désespéré sexuellement. Trois, agir au moment propice. Être Ou désespéré. quatre... Agir de façon méchante envers quelqu'un. So, number two is actually what I described. Number yes. two is pretty much what I described. Really? What, to be, to be completely desperate sexually? Yeah, it's kind of like you're, you're going for bad options, you're even... Yeah, well, sorry, yeah, I yeah, thought yeah, you meant the, the... Okay. So, that, so two was kind of what I described, actually. Essayer de tricher. Agir au moment propice. Oh, essayer de tricher. Wow, that's... Like to try, so. Hey, t'es en train d'essayer de baiser le cul du diable quand il est frais, là? Es, Est-ce que t'es en train de tricher? Agir au moment propice. Agir au moment propice, what does that mean? Does that mean like to react? It means to like the, to the, act the... at the right moment. Like, the, is, like you're oh, not lui missing là, the chance. Lui là, il a baisé le cul du diable quand that, il était frais. That's, oh, that's, that's, that's gotta be it. That's it's gotta, gotta be, be it. it. I reckon that's what it is. I'll, okay, I'll give you number three. Just for the sake of sticking with what I said earlier, I'll go with number two, even though I think it's probably number three. Okay. So you wouldn't have to... Paul. Ouais. Tu hésites encore? Non, moi, pour moi, c'est ouais, ag agir au moment prépice en mode, euh, hey, euh, t'as ré... Il y a un truc incroyable, une opportunité professionnelle incroyable qui, qui est arrivée, euh, ça se passe bien, tu dis, ah, là, là, hey, t'as su baiser le cul du diable quand c'était fait, là. C'est it's like, oh, you, you were able to... <laughs> I mean, the translation is amazing. You were able to fuck the devil but up the ass when he was cold. Yeah, it's like you, it you, has to be You that. got the opportunity. You, you, you yeah. got it. it has the gap was so small, but you were actually able... You, you made it for the chance you had. <laughs> that's, it, that's, that's what it is. is. That's what it is. You made it for the chance you had. So, yeah. Oh, shit. So, you were um, actually wrong. You were totally wrong. I was totally course, wrong yes. to start with, yeah. It's actually the opposite. What? Because what was my initial thing? Être en difficulté. Oh yeah, to be on être en difficulté. Ouais, ouais. So All that's right. what that's what it is. No, no, yeah. no. And yeah. the time I've heard it, the time I've heard it is I was in a car with someone on the highway, and there was like two trucks going like one in the back of each other, and my friend wanted to slip in between the trucks, and he and it was <sighs> literally impossible. Why would you ever want to uh, slip between two trucks? But because he wanted to change lanes, like they were uh, in the middle yes. lane, he was on the left lane and he needed to exit. So yeah. he go and then he goes, there will like the perfect timing is impossible unless one of the trucks put on the brakes a while and one of the trucks did and he slipped in between. And then he went like, dude, j'ai vraiment baisé le cul du diable pendant qu'il est frette. And I was like, what? <laughs> 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 like, uh, bon moment. Apparently in English, 
this makes sense. We say we strike the iron when it's hot. Yeah, but that's way less, you know, image. It's, I mean, it's much less visual. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's already a decent expression, honestly. Like, we, we've set the standard quite high. Like, it's a, strike the iron when it's hot. It's like, it's, there's something the almost poetic about yeah. that, you know? But, I fuck, le cul du diable. I fuck the devil's ass Quand when it was cold. Quand il est <laughs> Good one. Et right. La dernière expression, and okay. we're talking about something poetic. This one, c'est de la vraie poésie, mesdames et messieurs. Alors, au Québec, quand on dit à quelqu'un, ou quand on dit se dépoussiérer le jangui. <laughs> uh, like, no, no translation for that one. Se dépoussiérer <laughs> no le jangui. Right, dépoussiérer means to un to, to un dust. Yeah, to dust. To dust. To do right. To remove the dust. So to dust. Essentially. To, to dust. Undust something. Uh, le jangui, I imagine it means your penis. Le jangui. So that's just somebody's name. Like what the fuck? Yeah, I, and it's yeah. Well, it, well, it's someone's name, but whose name is it normally? Jangui. 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 Uh, so um, dépou vous cirez le jangui. I reckon it means. Right, no, I'm gonna let you guess because I'm guessing before you go. What do you guess it means? Um, okay, it's um, it's getting laid for the first time in a long time. It's like, Jean Guy, he's got a bit of dust on him. Right, accumulating dust after after such a long time. So it's it's the end d'une période de sécheresse. I that's what I was going with. Yeah, Rolly, we agree. Yeah, I. Well, I I'm just looking. I, I'm looking at the chat to see like. Like some some people said, se branler, faire pleurer, Mika, le se sortir les doigts du cul. Mais pour qu'est-ce que tu faisais avec les doigts dans ton cul déjà Je comprends pas. Se sortir les doigts ah. du cul. Masturbation. People are saying, se uh, dépuceler, so to have sex for the first time. Ah, uh, I'm still going. Uh, it seems sexual, actually. Yeah, faire pleurer le cyclope. Yeah, but faire pleurer le cyclope to 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 to, to make the cyclops cry. I think that just means to have sex in general or to masturbate. Like, there's no, it's not like after a long time. Like, for me, this is like a long, a long time coming. I, like, I, I'm really solid on my guess for the first time. I think well, I'm, I'm going with you for that guess. Well, guys, it's the right answer. Hey, yes! Yes! Like you guys nailed it. And again, the name of the person, Fine. le nom de la personne est important. Parce que si tu dis, ah, oh, je me suis dépoussiéré le, le Jonathan. Non, ça marche pas. C'est vraiment le Jean-Guy. Yeah. Like le yeah. Jean-Guy. Yeah. Ou, ou genre, se dépoussiérer le Nathan, par exemple. Ça mm. n'a aucun sens parce que ça arriverait jamais. <laughs> Does it, is it... Est-ce qu'on peut l'utiliser? Can we use it in other contexts? Like, hey, I haven't done a live... Uh, happy hour live in like one year and it's like oh shit I'm finding my feet again like I don't know je suis en train de me dépoussiérer le jangui non jangui c'est vraiment la bite hein? I've heard it only in a sexual manner okay well have really? you ever met a jangui <laughs> dude we only have five jangui on my street I see no that. no way uh, Hey, wow. Jean-Guy, Jean c'est vraiment un prénom incroyable, j'adore. Jean-Guy, nom de famille, Tremblay. <rire> Jean-Guy Tremblay, là. <rire> Jean-Guy Tremblay. Oh là là, wow. Nice, dude. Uh, good job, guys. So, C'était les trois expressions uh, de la journée, uh, de ce beau mois de novembre. The sad month of November. That's all right, don't be sad. Why? Why a sad month? Bah, I don't know, je sais pas. Non, c'est pas sad, c'est très euh, great. Est-ce que, est que, est que bah, peut-être c'est le moment pour dévoiler un petit peu ce qui se passe dans ta vie personnelle Peut-être il euh, y a des trucs euh, tristes qui se passent et euh, on est là pour toi, hein, mm. tu sais. On est là pour... Non, moi, je, moi, ça, moi, moi ça va. Euh, moi ça va. Euh, What's going on, Rowling What's Je m'ennuie de... What? de, de, de... I, 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 um, non, ça va, t'as pas d'air. Ça va, ça va, mais pourtant, mais pourtant, c'est un novembre plutôt triste. Ouais, c'est plus un petit, un petit temps gris, là, tu sais, il pleut un peu, <rire> là, you know, là, tu sais. No, I'm you very happy, guys. I'm very, extremely happy, extremely happy. <rire> <rire> do, Rolly, do you not have a show coming up? Yes. I have a show coming up. People from Montreal, Quebec, I will be presenting my one-hour show « Été les Lumières » à Terrebonne, tout près de Montréal, le 3 décembre prochain, à 20h au Foutoir Comedy Club, guys. 
allez sur rollyassal.com. Write it down, Paul. Ouais, allez, ah, j'avais mis ton Instagram. Callis. Ouais, mais sur mon Instagram, c'est parfait parce que sur Instagram, il y a le. There's a link that brings you to another link that will bring you to another link to the link to buy the tickets with, within the link. So it's all about links. Juste là, ici. Uh, go follow me on Instagram. Venez me voir en spectacle. Sinon, uh, je sais pas moi. Just écrivez-moi. Ok. <laughs> <laughs> Just write to me. I'm fucking lonely. All by myself. I love you, Céline. Esti. Um, all right, dude. Um, if on you're in, ouais, ben on, euh, on se voit bientôt. Uh, if you come in fucking January, yeah. Puis sinon, euh, on se voit bien trop quand même, quand même là, quand même là. Mais tu veux pas, euh, gars, écrivez dans le chat. D dites, Paul, tu veux pas venir 4 cinq jours à Montréal, 2, 3, 4, 5 décembre. Why don't you, why don't you come to my show, hein? Pourquoi c'est tout le temps uh, moi qui euh, veux aller en France? Pourquoi toi tu viens juste quatre jours? Là, tu vas dire, oh, ouais, mais I have he's, a kid. He's, he's, just so you know, he has opened his calendar. So he is actually I'm, considering I'm, this, I'm unless he's acting right now. No, I'm he's faking I'm, it. I'm going to London on December 1st, and I get back from London on December 5th. So, impossible. Impossible, c'est pas français, mais uh, impossible en ce cas. Dude. It's correct. At least I tried. C'est correct. Le, but I'll come, to, I'll come to one of your shows in Montreal. I promise. All right, dude. J ai, j ai, écoute, avec toi, Paul, j'ai... J'ai essayé de baiser le cul du job quand il fait fret, mais c'est impossible. Ton calendrier est impossible à bouger. This is true. Uh, all right. All right, Talk dude. Talk to you well, soon, guys. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Show. Thank you so much. Dude. You know, it was a pleasure for me, too. I just want to say it's, it's been a little while, but, you know, I didn't forget about you. And this was, <laughs> okay. this, was um, this was a wonderful thing. I hope, I hope there will be a fourth episode where I get to learn more. Québécois. More Québécois. Mate, there will always be more expressions episodes. because this is nice and yes. I can't make it out to the show <laughs> it, but maybe one day it would be nice. I, you, didn't, you didn't even maybe ask for day. me to come out but you know, maybe one day I don't know. Whatever. Come or you watch, come to uh, London the 28th of January. That, okay, that actually could happen. Open that could he's, happen. He's opening for me. That, oh! Okay, that could happen. That could happen. In London City. Okay. I like that idea. All right, dude. Perfect, guys. Talk to you Mate, soon. Take care. Thanks very much. Merci, on déjeune. Bye. Oh, see you later. Bisou bye, bisou bye, bisou bye. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for Roly Asal. Ah. Wait, where's my applause button? No. Hey. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that is it for part one of the show. Part two, uh, as I said before, was uh, is going to be available on patreon.com slash Paul Taylor. I have not yet put the link on patreon.com. I will put the link on patreon.com. As soon as I finish this, I forgot to put it on. I forgot to put it on, which will give uh, us time to go piss and maybe order some food. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. That yeah. we will eat during part two. Um, so Patreon, I will see you. We will see you. Uh, in a couple of minutes, you will get an email, Patreon, the people on Patreon, in a couple of minutes, uh, with the link to the to the fucking part two, and then uh, we're free to chat about whatever you want. Um, if uh, you're not joining us for part two, thank you for being here. It was lovely. Uh, Nate, where can we find you? Where's the best place to find your stuff? Is it Instagram? Is it YouTube? You know, like at this stage, I think that if you're meant to cross paths with me, it'll happen naturally. You know, it'll happen by itself. All right. Um, I like that. I, li <laughs> I like that. Otherwise, you could just look up Nathaniel Drew on YouTube. But uh, Nathaniel Drew on YouTube. There but you go. otherwise, you know, it'll happen. It'll happen. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> all right, dude. I was going to put all your shit up on the screen, but it's fine. We, we don't have time anymore. Right. Uh, go follow Nathaniel Drew on all of the social medias. He puts everything on there. And uh, Patreon, we will see you in um, five minutes the time for me to create the link to put it on the website and all that kind of stuff. And uh, and the rest of you, thank you for being here. Uh, Nate, do an outro phrase and I will do the jingle. My outro phrase? Just anything I want? Uh, yeah, just some sort of phrase and I will have the jingle that goes pow, pow, pow. Thank you for watching, Paul Taylor. Um, no pressure. It, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for watching Paul Taylor's Happy Hour Live. See you dickhead soon for another episode.